Hello and welcome to Scale Stuff. In this week's video, I'm going to be building and reviewing the new Airfix Austin General Service Truck in 135th scale. I'm looking forward to building this truck as the old Austin works is just up the road from me, so this subject matter is pretty close to home. Both my nans drove Austin trucks during World War II and both of them were strafed by the Luftwaffe, so maybe this build is for the nans. In the box you get a full colour instruction sheet and paint guide, the parts to build the model, decals to mark up two versions of the truck, and a small sheet of photo etch. A first quick look at the sprues shows that they're very sharp and crisp, and so they should be. This is a 2023 release and under a week old at the time of filming this video. This model shares a sprue with the Airfix K2 Ambulance model, but that's also a very new kit as far as kits go. So hopefully the cleanup will be minimal and all the parts will fit perfectly. Anyway, onto the build. First thing on the menu is making the chassis. Off screen, I've cleaned up all these parts. The cleanup was mostly just removing attachment points, but while building this step, I have noticed I've missed a couple of seam lines on the frontmost brace. But other than that, there's nothing much to watch out for here. The instructions point out that the square on D13 goes towards the right hand side of the model. Apparently this is important as later you add the exhaust here, so watch out for that. With the supports added, there are just a few bits to add to the tail brace. Next it's time to add the fake engine base and rear suspension. Then it's on to adding the differential and drive shaft. All the parts are falling into place and I'm really enjoying how this kit's going together so far. Now it's a simple case of adding the exhaust and front axle. Next, the instructions are asking me to make the wheels and add the front steering linkage, but I'm going to skip this step as painting the wheels will be much easier with them off later, so I'm just going to mark this bit as not done and move on. Now it's time to build and add the fuel tanks. Honestly this kit so far is mindless to make and the fits are all really good. One thing I would say to watch out for is seam lines, as because they are very fine, I keep missing them. Lastly, in this step, the instructions have you add the front fenders. Finally, a little bit of truck I can recognise. The next stage is adding some more bits to the chassis and the side steps for the truck. The side steps are a little bit of a fiddle to add, but go on okay in the end. Finally the kit gives me something to comment on, and it's a nitpick at best. Next it's on to building the rear bed of the truck. Firstly by adding the sides to the bed, then by adding the end bits. Now 
Now I'm making some boxes to go under the rear flat bed. The boxes go together okay, but the parts D53 give no clue as to which part of this is the front. But, as it's flimsy cans in a rack, I imagine that there's no right or wrong way to put them on. Now it's just a simple case of adding some framework to the rear bed. This goes on nice and easy. Adding the spare tyre holder is a little bit delicate though, and this part will benefit from a decent bit of drying time. Then the instructions want me to add the rear bed to the chassis and add the spare tyre, but I'm not going to add that at the moment as leaving it off will make painting it easier later on. So the only thing to add now is the space plate for the spare wheel holder. Next it's on to building the cab of the truck. Here I'm going to need to do some pre-painting, so I'm ignoring the instructions for the next few bits, as before I pre-paint the interior I'm going to build a few of the bits to make painting these bits more straightforward. With those bits assembled, I'm going to start the pre-painting. Firstly, I'm going to give these parts a quick coat of humble desert tan. I've raised the parts off the board I'm spraying them on with blue tack to stop paint pulling up and sticking the parts to the board. As with all my spray painting, I'm doing this off screen and outside to avoid fumigating myself. With the base coat dry, I paint a few of the internal parts in matte black. Blocky bits of the pre-painting dry, I then go on to add the decals to the dash and cab area. The decals in this kit came off the carrier film almost instantly and I ended up having to play catch the decal, so watch out for that if you're making one of these at home. With those on, I can now resume building. Firstly by adding a few details to the cab's base plate. For some of the smaller bits here, tweezers will be a must. Now it's on to making the main bulk of the cab, firstly by adding a few details to the windscreen. The instructions want me to add a lot of the clear parts at this stage, but I'm going to leave them off for a little bit longer. While the windshield's drying, I'm adding the sides and rear panels to the base plate. These bits go on well, but as they all need to be located into each other, I wouldn't want to stop building after adding just one bit here. With those bits added though, it's straight onto adding the dash and completing the main frame of the cab. So far, I like the way it's looking, but here I'm going to leave it to dry for a bit so it's safer to handle for more pre-painting. One thing I've got to do though is sort out the seats. I misread the instructions and uh, yeah, they're not grey. I'm fixing this with some Tamiya XF60 Dark Yellow. It's not a match for the Humbrol paint, but reference pictures seem to show the seats being a slightly different shade of yellow to the rest of the truck, so maybe the seats were plastic material or painted elsewhere. Now it's on to sorting out the seat cushions. For this I'm using Army Painter Skeleton Bone. 
Before I start sealing up the cab, I'm giving the cab and door interiors a light wash of Army Painter BS Dark Earth, just to add some shadows to the cab and highlight some of the details. Next it's time to add the clear parts of the cab. With the clear parts in, I add the roof and doors to the cab. And then add the cab to the chassis. Finally, that old Austin charm is starting to show through on the model. Now it's time to add the mud flaps to the model. The mud flaps go on simply, but I'm not sure which side of the flat one is meant to face outwards. With those on, it's on to finishing off the front of the truck. Firstly, by adding the radiator. Then the grill. Then lastly the bonnet. These bits go on okay. The fit is very precise though, but when you get it all lined up properly, these parts practically click together. Next it's time to add the photo etch to the model. Instructions also want me to add the rear view mirrors at this stage, but based on previous builds, I'm gonna leave them off until the end as they're always the first bit to break. Like with all the photo etch, this is a fiddly bit to make, but with a slow and steady approach and using as little glue as possible, a clean result should be easy. With this simple bit built, I add it to the front wheel arch. Now it's on to the final stage of the build, adding lots of little bits to the front of the truck. These bits go on nice and easy. I found with the lights it's easier to build and line them up on the truck rather than adding the bits together separately. The lights will benefit from a good bit of uh, drying time as they're quite delicate. Also with the lights, I'm leaving off the clear parts that go onto them so I can paint behind them later. With them bits on, that's the build stage of this model complete. Now it's onto the painting. For the base coat, I'm giving this model a coat of humble desert tan. I've masked off the windows using electrical tape rubbed down into all the little details of a cotton bud. This tape is not an ideal thing to use, but it's all that I've got. As always, I'm spraying this up off screen and outside to avoid fumigating myself. With the base coat on, this is how it's looking. First thing I'm gonna paint is the wheels. I'm just doing a basic coat of Vallejo matte black on them. While the wheels are drying, I start on the camo of the truck. For the first colour, I'm using Tamiya XF21 Sky, as it's a good match for what the colour plans after. This straight edge camo is a tricky thing to paint, and I'm just going to go slow and steady with this and do as good a job as I can using a free hand. With the sky on, it's time to start on the dark grey camo. For this, I'm using Tamiya XF24 Dark Grey. This paint seems even trickier to put on than the uh, previously done sky as it's a lot darker than the other colours and any mistakes will be really apparent. While following the colour plan on this kit, it appears that the rear of the cab has not been marked in on the plan, so here I'm just making it up as I go along. With the main camo down, I add the rear bed and wheels to the truck. 
which I instantly regret in the next step. Anyway, this is how the truck's looking so far. Now it's time to give the truck its first wash. For this I'm using watered down BS Dark Earth. Normally I'd use watered down black but I think this would be too stark as the camo on this truck is quite light. The model's taken a wash well but getting into all the little gaps to apply this would have been much easier if I hadn't glued it together in the last step. This is what it's looking like with the wash on. Next I'm adding the decals. The decals in this kit are nice and thin but for some reason they really like to curl up. With a cotton bud though they conform to the model really well, even in areas with quite a bit of texture. The decals go a long way to brighten up the kit and giving it a little bit more interest. Decals on, it's time to start sorting out the details. Firstly, by painting the backing for the headlights. For this, I'm using Army Painter Plate Mail. With the backing dry, I add the headlamp glass. I've painted up the frames here so it matches the backing. I find making headlamps like this gives them a bit more depth and a bit more interest than just simply painting onto the uh, front of the glass. Next it's time to give the model some panel lines. For this I'm using watered down matte black. This truck's got a lot more surface area to go over and it, yeah it's hard to keep track of where you've been already with the wash. Now it's time to start weathering the truck. For the first hit I'm giving the truck a mud coat. I'm applying some AK World War One khaki base mixed in with matte black. I'm adding this wherever muck might spray up onto the truck. Where possible, I'm applying this with a sponge to keep the effect random. But in some of the harder to reach places, I'm just using a brush. Next, I'm giving the truck its dust coat. For this, I'm using Army Painter Skeleton Bone and applying this as lightly as I can. This coat goes a long way to tie in all the colours together more and make this truck look like it's been in a dry and dusty environment. This light dry brush is also doing a great job of highlighting all of the little rivets and edges on the model. Still carrying on with the dust coat, now I'm applying some Vallejo European dust to the model. Mainly this coat is to get at the tyres to make them look even more matte and more like dirty rubber. Finally now, I'm tidying up a few of the details and giving the truck a light dab of BS Dark Earth, just to add some variety into the muck coat. And with that on, I think I'm going to call this model done. This is the finished model. I've really enjoyed making this kit and the Quanta Desert Camo is always a nice challenge to paint and weather. In conclusion, the Airfix Austin General Service Truck is a nice model. The kit goes together easily with most of the parts practically falling into place. If you are picky, one thing to watch out for on this kit is ejection marks on some of the less visible sides, though for me the underside marks are not an issue. Two areas where these ejection marks need to be addressed though is the rear cab panel and the rear tailgate inward side, as on these parts the ejection marks will be visible. If I was going to build this kit again, one thing I would do differently is to not glue the rear bed on until right at the end, as adding this part when I did in this build made painting the chassis and rear of the cab difficult later on. 
costing £33. I think that this kit is well worth it for the money as the model's got a lovely look and charm to it and for a 135th scale truck, you know, around 30 quid, I think is a fair price. But yeah, that's my build and review of the new Airfix 135th scale Austin General Service truck. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and find it helpful if you're building or thinking of buying this kit at home. Until next time though, look after yourselves and have a good one. Goodbye.